Welcome to Sound of Resistance channel. The fire of hell in Ukraine is not going out. The Ukrainian warriors have managed to make their name known to the whole world with their victories since February, when the Russian invasion began. Ukrainian heroes blocked the Russian army all over Ukraine. The Russian army is fleeing the attacks of Zelensky army. Russia has no power left to stand in Ukraine. It is only a matter of time before the Russian soldiers and their struggle in Ukraine and give up. In some part of Ukraine, it has started to be seen that Russian soldiers surrender while waving a white flag. The desperate Russian army is looking for a way out against the Ukrainian warriors. The Ukrainian army has cornered the Russian army in the Kherson region in the south of the country. As the Ukrainian artillery fired their long-range weapons, many Russian fronts were defeated in Kherson. A heavy blow was dealt to the Russian army as a result of the Ukrainian army's attacks on Kherson which Russian leader Putin announced for its illegal annexation. Ukrainian President Zelensky has no intention of stopping in Kherson. Zelensky's order to Ukrainian commanders is that the attacks continue until there is not a single Russian soldier left in the area. The Russian government has recently decided to remove the residents of the region in case the attacks of Ukrainian troops in Kherson continue to increase. Under the leadership of Russian commanders, the evacuation of the residents of Kherson to a safe area is still continuing. In the evacuation process initiated by Russia, thousands of residents have left Kherson so far. A great silence prevailed in the region after the evacuation of its inhabitants from Kherson. Russian leader Putin appealed to residents who still didn't leave the region, warning them to act quickly. Putin threatens the people of Kherson by giving them a choice to flee or be deported. Vladimir Putin warned those still living in Kherson that they should either flee to city or be deported. Speaking in Moscow, the Kremlin leader said, those who still live in Kherson are certainly threatened by the possibility of Ukrainian attacks. He said that civilians living in Kherson should not be exposed to shelling attacks, counterattacks or similar things and should be removed from the dangerous area. At the moment, all eyes on the Ukrainian war are on the involving situation in the Kherson Oblast and more specifically on the city of Kherson itself. This is the only major enclave that was captured at the beginning of the Russian occupation and it's still held by them. The Ukrainian army is focused on clearing Kherson from Russian soldiers with all its forces. The 63rd Brigade of Ukraine is preparing for the Kherson edition. After months of fierce fighting, the line of the contact between Ukrainian and Russian forces on the borders of Mykolaiv and Kherson regions has become almost slimed. Both sides await the right moment in Kherson, albeit for opposite reasons. Kyiv is building its forces for a new offensive that will follow the successful liberation of several villages in northeastern Kherson in early October. While Moscow awaits ambush Ukrainian troops with recently mobilized troops to reach the area, Russian soldiers are anchored at the north of the Kherson's right bank, Dnipro Lech. The Russian army has taken up a defensive position near the town of Snihurivka. In the further position of Kherson, the calm and cold-blooded images of the Ukrainian soldiers draw attention. Ukrainian soldiers from the 63rd Mechanized Brigade, one of the most trusted units of the Ukrainian army, sit quietly in the area, drinking coffee and cleaning their weapons. The relaxed demeanor of the Ukrainian soldiers reflects the confidence they felt in Kherson. In the last two months, the momentum in war has clearly shifted towards the Ukrainian side. The collapse of Russian lines in the northeastern Kharkov region in early September came as a shock even the Ukrainians, as they quickly recaptured more than 8,000 square kilometers, driving Russian troops back to their border. The struggle of Ukrainian army with the Russian troops in Kherson was quite difficult. The Ukrainian army faced most of Moscow's remaining professional troops in Kherson, making only temporary gains transferred there a few months ago. Advances into northeastern Kherson in early October were hard won. Nazar, an officer in the Ukrainian army, stated that the strength of the Russian attacks in Kherson decreased over time. Ukrainian brigade commanders confirmed that the shelling had decreased this significant. They are hitting us this morning, but it is not like before, says Ukrainian officer Nazar. The density is much lower than it was month and a half ago. They are still shooting us, Graz Uragans, heavy Hovitzizers, but now we are controlling the situation, said he. The last significant attack we faced by the Russian army was a two months ago, said Nazar, adding to his statements. Russian soldiers first made a reconnaissance in the area, a group of men came to us, we killed some, drove the rest. We had to bury their deaths, they didn't come back to get the bodies, he said. 
One of the most important reasons for the decrease in the violence of the Russian army's attacks on the Ukrainian fronts in Kherson is the soldiers mobilized by the Russian leader Putin. Reservists in the Russian army are mostly untrained, inexperienced and unfit for military service. However, Vladimir Putin's mobilization announced a little over a month ago has already sent enlisted men to the front here. We have already seen his mobilized men, says Nazar, a Ukrainian officer stationed in Kherson. You can tell right away by looking at the readiness levels, he said. Russian reservists are biggest cause of Russia's territorial losses in Ukraine in the last eight weeks. The attitude of Russia's military and political leadership towards its soldiers explains the huge losses they took, as well as their shattered moral. Ukraine claims to have killed more than 65,000 Russian soldiers, while the Pentagon in August estimated that Russia had suffered more than 80,000 casualties to date. The evil eye points to Russian commanders as another cause of Russian losses. The Ukrainian officer said Russian commanders give orders and tasks to their soldiers without knowing how to succeed. The Russian commanders then sit back as their soldiers fight, not caring how many die or not. He pointed out that this was one of the biggest mistakes made by Russian commanders. Evil Eye, for your soldiers in the war zone to trust you, they need to see that you are in the forward position with them, not far away. This is the opposite side of what the Russian officers think, he said. Such stance of the Russian leadership in Ukraine led to an increasing number of capitulations at the front. Many Russian soldiers who lost their trust in the Russian army surrendered in the Ukrainian army. The Ukrainian army, after its successes in the region, has increased the number of Russian prisoners in recent months. Recently, only one thing has been spoken in the south of Ukraine. It's about too much awaited final assault on Kherson to liberate the only provincial capital that Russian troops have captured since February 24. Ukrainian comments say the operation is almost ready to continue and Ukrainian forces are already ready to expected Kherson offensive. Ukrainian officer Nazar answered the curious question about the Kherson attack, which was confusing. Nazar said, are we ready to enter Kherson now? Yes, we are ready. Can we do it? Yes, if we really want it. But we need to understand what kind of human loses we will have in our attack on Kherson. The most important thing is people's life. As a commander, February 24, I must do everything to get everyone who come to me home, to see the end of the war, he said. As I said, more actions to shape the offensive were crucial to see its success with as few casualties as possible. In order to take the city of Kherson, we must take seriously, analyze and examine the situation of every operation we have carried out, the Ukrainian officer explains. The attack is not just an infantry attack. Offensive is a big job at all levels, from the general staff to smallest units. We are doing our part and are getting here. Ukrainian commanders attribute much of the success of their unit and Ukrainian army as a whole to the extensive reforms carried out since 2014. When I started my military career in 2015, I saw all kinds of officers in the army, Nazar said. There were officers from the Soviet area, there were officers who had graduated from West Point. If you look at our military now, we are moving towards NATO standards, not only on paper but in reality. NATO is our tomorrow. The military is a cross-section of society and together they are advancing West, he said. Ukrainian officer Nazar also referred to heroic struggles of the Ukrainians in the war against Russia. I am proud to say there are a lot of good people in my unit, really valuable guys, Nazar said. When enlisting in February, there was literally a queue to join the Ukrainian army. That's why it's my responsibility to get them home safely, he said. Ukrainian officer, you can force a person to fear you, but you cannot force him to respect you. That's why it is so important to me to earn that respect from my soldiers. We all went through very difficult situations together and now we are like a big family. We support each other and defend our country. The statements of the officer who served in the Ukrainian army summarize the Ukrainian struggles that have been going on since February 24. Ukrainians continue their struggle for the blessed days when they will be victorious with one heart against Russia. Thank you for watching us.